flying, airplane riding, <laughs> big girl hanging out. What's up? Okay, can we do this thing? <laughs> you, you put something in that? I've been here too long, man. Hey, it's past my bedtime. I remember my first beer. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, America? Time for another episode of Choir Practice. We are out here at the Law Enforcement Today studio in what I lovingly refer to as the People's Republic of Connecticut. Um, we're out here with my co-host, Bernie. Say hello. Hey, how are you? You, you're supposed to go into more of a, like, hey, I'm a retired officer. Oh, right? I'm a retired officer. God, you are. <laughs> Manchester, Connecticut, 33, three years of service. Uh, love it. Thank you. Glad Six to be here. sips of whiskey at the Whiskey Wall. I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> we'll introduce you in a second, but a quick shout out to some of our partners. Uh, Warrior 12 Apparel is one of my favorite shirts from these guys. Faith is my compass. Um, when I travel through TSA, I tend to wear slightly more offensive shirts um, because then nobody sits next to me when I'm traveling to the West. And if they do, it's a friend. Uh, shout out to Miniman Coffee, absolute best coffee in America. I uh, got to hang out with my boy Ted Nugent and I before shooting some guns and bows and arrows and stuff while drinking Miniman Coffee. So you guys should send me more free coffee because I love it. And another big shout out to Six Hour, who takes really good care of us with some of the most patriotic guns in America. Okay. I'm done. Tell them all who you are. I'm Dan Kerning. I'm the uh, CEO founder of uh, Webhouse. We're an IT data center infrastructure cloud company. Uh, 17, uh, 17 year naval aviator vet. Thank I you. also, uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate your service. I also have a, uh, a software development company that we started our own product uh, about nine years ago that we've been developing. Um, it does situational awareness as a service. It's a mobile app cloud platform um instant management and protection that was uh, literally the most boring description i've ever heard for one of the coolest new tech companies i've seen in a long time so um let, let's dive into that a little bit because sure. what really jumped out to me when we first started chatting so we did the zoom together and first yep. of all um you're very much like myself you're not afraid to, to talk about your love of god your love of country your love of family yep. and so um i had an immediate connection with you based on that but then you started telling me about what you created this company to do and it's pretty cool man the, i think the biggest challenge is that this technology that you built can do so much for so many people so let's yeah. talk about what you built and why you built it really the the impetus for it was uh, a, a customer of ours about nine years ago approached me with they had to increase their physical camera infrastructure by like 30 percent. they had to do it 90 days they had no budget and uh the biggest issue was it was for the super bowl so it was a big event and, uh, you know, he asked me to come up with a solution. And uh, so we had to figure out how to do it cheap, fast, quick, right? So I went back to the board and we basically came back with a mobile app that was, gave you the ability to take a picture, take a video, and they could distribute it on the smartphone so there was no cost to the infrastructure to do it. They loved the idea. We deployed it for the Super Bowl. There wasn't a lot of you know security incidents that occurred, but what they found was maintenance, operations, um, you know, icing on the tracks, crowding, those kind of types of things really what kicked it off. Um, and so we've continued to develop the, the product for nine years. Um, they still use it at New Jersey Transit today, and they're using it for all sorts of things. Kind of like to your point, it does so much. It's it's hard to encompass it into you know two sentences, but. Um, you know, our new product is much faster. Um, it's, it's a little bit more resilient as far as, you know, it's a see and send it product is, is what it's called. You take a picture, you can submit it to a security operations center, a network operations center. You can hit 911 with it. We have a, a national security company that we're partnered with. Um, so it's, it's like a personal safety app, but you could distributed across your campus also. Like you said, it's kind of hard to encompass it in a couple sentences, yeah. So you've got a, a kid who's going off to school for the first time. Talk to me about sort of the Overwatch functionality. So we have something called Guard Me. Um, and basically the idea behind it was blue phones on the campus. The, the idea that if you have something happen to you that you have to be near a blue phone to, to actually work it. And what are the odds of that happening, right? And how do you get to them? So the idea is that, you know, uh, you've got somebody that's leaving, let's say the library at midnight and they're transiting over to the dorm and, you know, they're alone. So they want somebody to watch them. So they can pull up the application and basically say, hey, I, I want you to guard me for the next 15 minutes. I'm going from point A to point B. 
And if something happens to me along the way, I, I want somebody there with me. And it's that simple. Let's talk about the um, applications for guys who are like border patrol, who are out in the middle of nowhere, no cell service, spotty radio service. Um, you've got some some technology there for them as well. We we uh, we integrated basically with a satellite so that we're able to, you know, when you're not in that cellular, you're not in wireless, you could actually use a satellite functionality for it. So same thing, you know, it's a, you, you can hit a panic button, you could submit incidents, you can, you know, communicate two way if you have to. Um, so on the border, it makes a lot more sense using that functionality. Yeah. You know, we saw it firsthand on, on uh, one of our first border visits. We went out with the Cochise County Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. and we, uh, he pulls off to the side of the highway and he says to my cinematographer, a new guy at the time, this guy, Sean, he said, Hey, uh, just to let you guys know, see this button here. So yeah, he goes, that's the button that will unlock all of the rifles. I was like, all right, Roger that. And Sean goes, why are you telling us that? It's <laughs> Sean. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, well, because, dude, we're in the middle of nowhere. And so if shit goes south, you are my backup. And Sean gets a little bit nervous. He was like, well, what do you mean if shit goes south? Yeah. He was like, listen, we will run code at 120 miles an hour for an hour and a half to get to a call out here. He goes, people where you're from up in Connecticut, they don't realize because you call the cops and they're there in a couple of minutes. Yep. Out here, you call the cops and you've basically had to protect your own property for two hours, sometimes more before they get out here. Um, and so when we went out there and when we were out you know, on the border with the National Border Patrol Council and those guys, there were a lot of times, because you are in the middle of freaking nowhere, mm -hmm. there's no cell service. If you're lucky, you're, you're bouncing off of the, uh, the Mexico um, antennas. And then even with uh, the radios, it was really spotty out there. And so it's one thing for us to be sitting here in Connecticut where, you know, everyone has access to everything. But in other parts of the country, the middle of nowhere, it's it's a very different story. So I think it's super sure. cool technology. Yeah, you, br you bring up a good point, too. One of our customers is uh, in Minneapolis and uh, they were having a big issue with the defund police and, and the police not showing up in a certain amount of time. Um, they have a, a, a battered women facility, I'll call it. And uh, when they would call 911, the, the police would, were showing up in the average three and a half, four hours off. And when they deployed our technology, I think it's because our you know, National Operations Center that interacts, right? So it's kind of in between you and the 911 operator. They deployed our technology and the, the first um, incident they had, they showed up in 12 minutes. It helps a lot, yeah. Well, I think one of the biggest problems that we've had in the, you know, we all hear about the evolution of law enforcement, right? And the evolution of policing. But one of the things that really hasn't evolved has been technology, technology. Yeah. Yeah. in the law enforcement space. Um, sure, we see better ballistic vests and, and shields. And now we see forced alternatives to things like OC because you have cities that are banning it. But in terms of the actual technology, um, We've seen the private sector, businesses like yours that have stepped up and said, all right, enough. Like, if you guys aren't going to come up with solutions, we're going to do it in the private sector and offer some of these opportunities and capabilities to the law enforcement community. I have a feeling that as the pendulum continues to swing back and, and crime continues to rise because of the defund the police movement, because of, of issues with retention of officers, um, I think you're going to see refunding of agencies and a reinvestment back into technology because there's there's really going to be, I think, in 2024, that sort of come to Jesus moment of going, oh, my God, we we can't protect it. We can't keep doing what we're doing. It's the definition of insanity right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is your um, what is your why? Why do you continue to do this? I think more than anything, it, it's to your point, right, which is. You know, between law enforcement officers, the communications are typically very good. But as a citizen, it's, you know, it's not. And things are happening a lot faster these days. And, and like you said, there's, there's understaffing. You know, everybody's overworked um, on the law enforcement side. That as a citizen, you want to, you know, have something that gives you a little bit closer touch. I've got, you know, three boys and I worry about every time they go out, you wonder what's going to happen to them and the ability for them, you know, to deploy this technology very easily and have somebody watch them or have immediate contact with professionals. It, it makes a difference. Awesome. Shameless plug. How can people learn more? You can go to uh, visualc3.com right now. That's the name of the website. And, uh, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, social media and those types of things.
you know, Bernie knows the ironic full circle ending of this story, which is that Sean, who almost had a panic attack when he learned where the rifles were, is now a sworn officer. That's right. um, he quit to go become a cop because he was so inspired by the work that we do at law enforcement today. Yeah. So kind of a cruel irony. And I know to never drive up in Feeding Hills because I know he's got a target on that now. So <laughs> brother, thanks for coming thanks. on the show, man. Thanks. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks for hitting that share button. God bless you all. God bless America. See you later, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, man. <laughs>